Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint some fishing lures. Uh, we'll be using acrylic paints and I'll be showing you step by step how to do it from start to finish drawing and everything. I'm trying to keep it very simple so you can maybe do this with your kids for Father's Day. Um, I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat for the live show. So if you've got questions, you can ask those uh, while I'm painting and let's get started. All right, so I'm going to be using a uh, pre-painted canvas today. It's the Cantone Canvas Panel Pack from Fredericks. Uh, they're 9 by 12 inch Terra Gray panels. There's three in the pack, and um, so I'm going to be using that. But if you don't have these, you can just paint uh, your canvas with a coat of, of gray to start with, kind of a medium gray. Let me go over my brushes <clears throat> really quick. I'm just going to be using a few today. Uh, we've got a quarter inch and a three eighths inch angle, uh, a small round liner, number one, select, and a number four round or a number one, <coughs> excuse me, goodness, I swallowed wrong, um, <laughs> number one round. Uh, these are all Princeton brushes, so uh, really these kind of can be interchangeable. I'm not sure which one I'm going to want to use, but... Uh, and then you're going to want a large flat of some sort that's kind of a, a heavy bristle brush and uh, a toothbrush because we're going to be splattering. So, yay. And we've got nice. a, a good sponsor for our messy, messy show today. Lava Soap is, <laughs> is going to be our sponsor. And uh, we've got a quick little video that we want to show you uh, about them. And then we'll get started with our project. Painting is a messy job, and for years I've used regular dish soap to get the paint off of my hands after our tutorials. Sometimes having to use a nail brush to scrub and scrub and scrub. Well, Lava Soap has come to my rescue. They sent me some samples to try. Really didn't know what to expect, but uh, I have been incredibly impressed. The power of pumice is the key to its effectiveness. It only takes a couple of little swipes with a bar of Lava Soap, and the paint just comes straight off my hands. It's also moisturized, so it leaves them nice and soft. I am definitely a believer now. <laughs> totally sold. Use it every time. I need to clean my hands from paint. It is amazing. If you want to check it out for yourself, there is a link down in the description that says where to buy. Whatever you're into, a lava gets it out. All right, if you haven't tried it and you paint, uh, you might want to check them out. <laughs> pretty pretty awesome. I don't know how I've uh, gone 30 years without uh, using them, but I do now. So <laughs> let me uh, go over our paints really quick with you. We've got uh, unbleached titanium, titanium white, and I've got a liquid form and a regular form, but you can use either or. Um, this is uh, cadmium red light, cadmium medium, cadmium red medium, cadmium yellow medium, yellow oxide yellow green yellow shade this is sap green but you can mix this color uh, teal which is also a mixable color uh, thalo blue green shade ultramarine blue burnt umber burnt sienna and then I've got black carbon black here also a liquid form and a regular f uh, heavy body form um, so this one's just a little bit more fluid like a craft paint and then the uh, gold and silver paints. And those are optional as well. You can use those or not. Um, and if you don't have those exact colors, just use what you've got that's similar. You can make your lures whatever colors you want. So um, let's work on our background first. And um, I'm going to use my large brush for that. I'm gonna dip it in the water just a little bit, but I wanna keep it fairly stiff. And I'm gonna grab some of the unbleached titanium and a little bit of the black. Just a little bit to start with. I wanna make a color that's just slightly darker than this background color. And then I'm gonna sweep through that color and get some streaks going in there. I don't wanna over blend it because I want these kind of uh, light colored streaks in my paint. And I'm gonna very lightly, almost barely just touch it down on the canvas and run it across. I'm gonna turn it over. And we're going to just run it across. And if you get kind of a too thick of an area, you can kind of go over with the edge. I'm just going to run it back and forth. And here it's kind of catching on that 
canvas texture. That's what we want. Get a little bit more. Oh, a little pink. So really excited to be painting this for you today. Mark, this was Mark's choice for Father's Day this year. <laughs> so he had the choice between the fishing lures and a fisherman. We were going to do some fishing. So I think this will be a fun one. Yes, this one was more alluring to me. More what? Alluring. Oh, God. What? <laughs> Got to catch your attention too, with that? It's still too early in the morning for puns. It's not even morning and it's too early for puns. <laughs> right. got a little bit more of the lighter color here and I'm just kind of going over I want to catch that canvas texture like that so I'm just laying the brush kind of almost flat is what will help achieve that look and not having too much paint in your brush too will help as well because it'll just kind of catch on the texture of your canvas all right, I think that's good. I'm not going to like go super realistic on the wood today because I'm wanting to keep it kind of simple for kids. But if you want to do one that's a little bit more realistic, I do have some tutorials on wood grain. Um, lots of them, actually. Um, Almost so can, as many as splatters. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a popular theme this year. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do one kind of right down the middle here. and I'm going to use a ruler. And just kind of line it up with my edges and pick up a little bit of my fluid black. It'll just make it a little bit easier for this to go on. I'm mixing it in with that lighter gray just a little bit to cut the color. And I've got my 3 8 inch angle brush. Really any kind of flat brush will do for this. And I'm just going to lay it right on the edge of that ruler and draw a straight line all the way across. And then I'm going to move this up and do it above. right across makes a really great straight line and one more right here there we go make that a little bit thicker the less you press down the thinner your line will be so if you press down a little harder you're going to get a thicker line there you go all right, so I think that that's pretty much all we're going to do for the wood. Um, if you want to go into a little bit more detail, you can maybe use the tip of your brush and kind of draw some little dots. Maybe we'll do a couple of dots, not holes, kind of small circles, things like that. Like a few streaks with the bigger brush. Make sure that you kind of just keep it flat if you're going to be doing some streaks. Press your brush flat. So you have a nice firm line here and then you can just kind of glide it along that edge and you can get some straight lines with it. The brush kind of does the work for you. So I'll just do a few little lines here. Make it look like kind of a rustic board that those fishing lures are hanging off of. I'm going to clean that out. I should be doing water cam, huh? Oh, oh yeah. there it is. It's <laughs> exciting. Look at that brush action in the water. <laughs> like a pro. Yeah. That's 30 years of practice right there. That's yes. Yes, it takes. So okay. don't don't be don't worry if you can't do it just like that <laughs> when you first start out, but it'll come. It'll come yeah. eventually. You just got to keep practicing. And right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Good encouragement. And All right. <laughs> I think, let me see, this is pretty dry, so I'm going to go ahead and try to work on it and see if this got dried already. Yeah, pretty much. All right. So you're going to want to wait till this dries completely before you do this next step. So I'm going to use uh, regular school chalk. Uh, you could use watercolor pencil, um, uh, pastel pencil, um, anything that's going to be kind of water soluble that'll dissolve into the paint after you draw with it. Um, the regular pencils will show up a little bit so I mean it's not a big deal but if you don't want your lines to show up then you can I would use chalk so pro tip number one and for those who don't know what school chalk is it's regular it's mm -hmm. regular chalk back in the old day dustless chalk is the <clears throat> best but mm -hmm. it's it's uh, 
can be difficult to find ones that say dustless chalk. So it's just well, just let everybody know that back in the old days, before, before computers, before white marker boards and dry right. erase boards, <laughs> there were chalk boards. That's right. There were. All right, I'm making five marks here because we've got five fishing lures. I'm trying to kind of place them evenly, so I'm going to start with the first one and just draw a line down from the top. We'll put our fishing lure right in this middle kind of third, maybe just below the, the board mark here. So that one will be right in here, and it's just going to be a big, long oval. And I want to end it right about here so that we can have the little fishing hook hanging down right here. I might make it a little bit longer. This was Mark's choice. This is what the... <laughs> you keep saying that. What was the, name of, was the name of the fishing lure here? This was one of yours that um, you asked for. If it's a larger size, it's the Magnum Torpedo. Yeah. Fancy. Fish with a tiny torpedo or the Magnum Torpedo. Right. Tiny Torpedo is the other one mm -hmm. that they do. It's just a little bit shorter. Right. Hence the name. Longer does have that kind of torpedo shape, right? Right, see, and see, so it's see kind of pointed in the tip, and then it kind of narrows right down here. And then the hook hangs right, right at the tail end, but not quite at the very tip. And it sort of hangs off to the side here. So you're going to do a straight line for the hook, and then just two curved lines back up. And uh, if you want to do a third one, you can kind of do just like a line here, but there's, it's sort of hidden behind the post here. And then this one is kind of right about here. It kind of comes out. And just try to kind of get them about the same size. Okay, so now we want to leave room for this one. I think we'll have enough room here. I might move it over just a little bit. Bring that one down. And then this one's going to start actually way up here. We're going to start the with a diagonal line this way. And then it's going to curve down like that to a point. It's a little bit smaller, not quite as long as this one. And then there's a red bead right here. And then there's some fringe tassel tail thing. And then the hook on this one is kind of hidden in this stuff there. So sneaky. I hope you can see that. I think it's showing up okay. Oh yeah, it is. Okay, yep. good. Um, and then this one looks like a fish, so it's kind of right in here. And it's going to be starting uh, about, about where this one does. And you're going to taper it down, similar shape to this one, so it's kind of a long oval. You can make it a little fatter if you want a bigger fish, it's just up to you. Um, and then the tail tapers in and does kind of an upside down heart shape like that and this one's got a little bit of a point to the end so you can make it a little bit more pointy there okay and then he's got some lines in his body but we'll put those in later and then his hooks are off this way there and there and then this one, I guess I am going to have to put a little bit farther out. This one's my personal favorite because it's got all these feathers in it. So <laughs> this is Angela's choice. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do a big kind of oval shape off this way. Kind of hanging that way. And then there's a big bead, red bead right here. It's sort of a cone shape and they kind of hang together from off of a there's a gold bead right here and then the feathers come off right off the end of the bead and it's not quite as long as this so this goes down a little bit longer and then the feathers start up here and come down like this and if you made it too close to the edge you can always move it up uh, but we want to leave a little bit of room at the bottom for the, you know, breathing room for our feathers. And then um, our 
our other one's gonna fit right in here. So I'm gonna move this over just a little bit right here. And it's gonna start right about where that was, maybe a little bit lower. And it's kind of a wavy line that way. So you're gonna make a wavy line there and then curve it over and then as you go around the bottom here you're going to make it a little bit wider from here to here so it's a little bit wider on the bottom right there it's a big S shape kind of a cool one and its hook hangs down straight from here and it's got a little red tag that looks like a little upside down heart I might make that one a little bit smaller. I feel like it's a little bit big. So if you make a mistake with your chalk, the nice thing about it is you can just kind of erase, move things around. Just use a damp cloth. Don't press too hard because you can kind of see how the paint's coming off a little bit. So that paint is not quite um, cured yet. So it's going to take it almost a full day to cure fully. So you want to uh, just be gentle with it when you wipe wipe it clean. Okay, I'm going to move this up just a little bit. There we go. So there's our fishing lures. Whoops, I erased that guy. There. And I made them a little bit bigger than the picture just because I wanted them to kind of fill up our space a little bit better. Not so much dead space in between them. Let's get to painting be the fun part. Um, I think I'm going to, before I start painting though, I want to splatter. So I'm going to use the ultramarine blue what for that. Life. Splatter. A little ultramarine blue. A little tiny bit of black. I'm using a toothbrush. But you can use a fan brush, any kind of stiff bristle brush will do. Make sure your paint is nice and watery. If it's not watery enough, it won't splatter at all. It'll just kind of stick to your brush. So I'm going to just splatter, almost like water splatters. But we're doing a little bit darker. Might even do some teal. This will kind of age our wood as well as kind of just give it a kind of an extra little splash of something special. Splash. <laughs> Clean that out. Grab a little bit of white, a little bit of the teal, and grab a little bit of that gray blue. Chad, Chad is freaking out about the pre splatter. Uh oh. <laughs> it's like so early. Because we usually wait, save it to the end. Yeah, yeah it's usually it's like at the, the end. grand finale. <laughs> Like boom right now. It's well, happening. I just don't want them to get the it's on my fish, so I wanted to do it early. So I don't want it or you know, didn't want it on the fishing lures. Right. So this is a light blue here. Alright, that's good. And that technique that I'm doing is pretty easy, but I I just hold it right above my thumb in my fist. And point it straight down at the canvas. You, the, it'll come. Uh, the paint will fly off wherever you're pointing the end of the toothbrush. So you want to, you don't want to point this at your sideways like this because the paint will go that way. It'll point go your straight at your husband. Kids, don't point at kids. It at yeah, pets. Exactly. <laughs> it will. So be responsible. Just keep that in mind. Okay. With great painting comes great responsibility. <laughs> Exactly. And then I'm just going to dab it off so that it dries. It'll leave little circles wherever we did it. But that way we can get to our painting real quick. Just let it dry for a couple seconds before you dab it off. And if you want to do that, or you could just let it dry completely before this next step. All right, I'm going to get the 3 8 inch angle to start with. And let's go ahead and just start it on this big guy right here in the middle. I'm going to grab some of our yellow and some white. Uh, white will help make your yellow more opaque. If you want to, you can do your whole background of the fish with white first. 
uh, and then do the colors over the top. That'll make sure that you get this background covered. If you're using craft paint, that's probably what I would do is do a step where you just paint everything white, all of these fishing lures white first, and then do your colors over the top, and that way uh, the other colors will show up better. Or you can just do a couple coats of your colors, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to do half my yellow, and then I'm going to grab this. Sap green is just phthalo green plus a little bit of black, so maybe a little bit of yellow in it. And I'm going to do the green on this side. And I'm just using that edge of my brush to create that straight line right there. Just take your time with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's the nice thing about this kind of painting. You can make a little bit more kind of ch short choppy brush strokes. You can make it a little bit more kind of impressionist looking or, you know, impressionist messy. <laughs> Equal messy. Uh, <laughs> It's a great tool for... I try to use that with my Excel spreadsheets at work. It doesn't... You, that's it's an impressionist... A, yeah, it's an impressionistic spreadsheet. And spreadsheet. they looked at me like, no, it's 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 crap. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work for all right. no. things. <laughs> know your, know but, your subject. But it's painterly. <laughs> no, still no. I like no, Mark. It still needs to add up correctly. <laughs> <laughs> good to know good to know okay and just where these touch they'll kind of blend a little bit if you do the yellow uh, do the green when the yellow is still wet if, the, if you haven't then what you can do is kind of just go through and mix those two colors and do a little bit of the yellow green right there where those two meet and just all the way down and blend them out a little bit. I'm going to grab a little bit of that brighter yellow and do some bright yellow over here. Ideally, we'd let that dry, but we're going to just hope for the best. There we go. It's sticking. Okay. You notice how an artist didn't name this lure. <laughs> yeah, because it just says tiny torpedo. That's what it looks like. It's small. It's a tiny torpedo. Mm -hmm. Artist would be something weird like Benzema Dazzalone yellow bellied, <laughs> <laughs> geometrically shaped. Uh huh. <laughs> so, on that note, welcome everybody. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. And uh, actually, in Arkansas, if you're in Arkansas, in uh, June 9th. 2018 right. you can fish for free Ooh. all weekend long friday saturday sunday really they, yep well, so you don't need a good. license or anything you can just go out and go fishing this is a good weekend to do this then i did not it know is. that we'll go out there we'll throw the painting in the lake later on see what happens <laughs> <laughs> see if we catch anything <laughs> <laughs> they'll say hey you're littering i said no we're fishing good plan <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've mixed uh, phthalo blue and ultramarine blue. It makes this kind of beautiful medium blue color. I'm going to use that for this side of this fish here. People are mentioning that in chat that the, the gray is hot, helping these colors to really pop. It the is. blues and the yellows. and Yeah, I think so. I think it'll be a pretty background for these colors. And like I said, you could do any colors that you wanted to. So if you wanted to do two different colors here, you could do red and yellow or, or you know, green and whatever. Um, just be, be aware of how the two colors are going to blend. So I wouldn't pick a color that Maybe like red. If you did red on one side, this green green and red together make like a brown. So it wouldn't make a, nice, a real pretty blend necessarily. So just keep that in mind. If you're working with kids, um, sometimes they like to uh, 
try interesting color combos, but uh, you can kind of steer them in. I usually would give them choices in between like two or three color schemes and say, you know, these are your, for this fish, you can do this color or this color, you know, that kind of thing. And that way, um, I knew that they would go together and they still had a choice of what they'd like to pick. Okay, here is our little fishy hair. Just, his tail's getting really long. Um, he's cute. And I'm going to grab the white. Mix that with that. And do the white along this one side here. Right on top. And just blend back and forth into that wet paint. If your blue's dry, you can do this over the top of the dry paint. It doesn't matter. Just kind of blending back and forth. I can get a little bit of that darker blue and go back over the, just like we did here, and work over the top lightly, just to kind of blend those two. They don't have to be perfectly blended though. It can be kind of streaky. As long as you kind of do it this direction, it'll look good. Keep your brush strokes going vertical. tip of the brush just go through here and do a little bit darker edge right along that side tap it in you can use your finger to kind of blend it if you need to that blue is starting to dry so it's gonna you may want to wait till it's completely dry to do this step I think it's still wet enough though getting some of that lighter blue Blending it back over. There we go. Okay. For this last one, I'm going to do a phyllo or a burnt sienna and yellow oxide. Kind of a gold color for this tag. Oh. I disappeared it. It's gone. It's right in here somewhere. So we got a question relating to the your mat. Yes. How do you like it? I do. I like it a lot. It's great. It's definitely it's kind of sticky so the paint the canvas doesn't move around too much. And it does wipe clean pretty pretty easily. You can see the splatters there, and it, it just wipes right off. So a gift from an adoring fan. Yeah, Joe Parker. Thank you, Joe. That was very cool. I did not expect that. I was. Uh, she said she was sending me something. I was like, ooh. And there was no and chocolate in the box. Yeah, Mark was a little bit disappointed. It wasn't mm -hmm. chocolate. Yeah. Sorry, Joe, but. <laughs> you know. Next time, you know. I guess I. I'm Matt is okay. <laughs> Grab some burnt umber here. I'm going to do burnt umber along that back side here. Just where it's kind of going to be shadowed by the bead of red right here. And this is kind of a wavy, so I'm going to just kind of dab in a little bit of lines across it with that darker color. And we're going to do the gold on top so it will um, look shiny, but the, the gold we're using is transparent here, or somewhat translucent, so you'll still be able to see the the dark color through it and um, we're picking a color that's similar to 
similar enough to the gold that it'll look good underneath. All right, let's do our bead. So we're gonna bring that right up over the top. Right here, these two kind of meet uh, together. It goes out and then it kind of goes straight. This is the cadmium red medium, and it's gonna taper again. So it's just like a triangle with triangles on either end with a rectangle, long rectangle in the middle there. I'm going to grab a little bit of white on the tip of my brush, blend that in, grab a little bit of that cadmium red light. That'll make a little bit more of an orangey red. And I'm going to do a highlight there. And just kind of tap it all along right here. So do a line across there. Line down the middle. And another line here at the bottom. And another line on one side right there. So there. I may need to wait for that to dry a little bit more for it to show up better. Let's just do that. We'll just paint it back in and we'll wait. It just needs to dry a little bit more for that to show up better. guy here. Can be white. A little tiny bit of that gray or black to make it gray. And I want it lighter than the background color, so it's almost white. Give a shout out to some of the dads out there. Yes. Give a shout out to Al. He's watching. I don't know if he's being forced to watch. <laughs> Trisha claims that he's he loves watching these. I don't know if he's duct tape to make sure or what, but you know, blink Al if you need help. <laughs> Any sign it is. <laughs> guys like to paint it's that's oddly true. enough you know yeah <laughs> it's because you don't <laughs> okay I'm grabbing the teal I'm gonna turn that over so I grab the teal on the tip tip of the brush here and then I grab just a little bit of that phthalo blue and I rub ran it together so that there's still that gray on this side but it, then it kind of blends to this darker color and I'm just going to run it right along the edge there. It's a really nifty little trick called double loading. And you get a nice blended edge without even really doing much work. Just make sure that you don't go too far into your gray or else you know you'll just have a stripe of blue. So you want a wide enough brush that you can get a good blend. I'm going to do it one more time. Get a little thicker line there. There we go. What? Someone said that they use painter's tape, not duct tape. Tape down their husbands. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Works better, yeah. It's more appropriate too, you know. Guess it doesn't leave as much residue. Right. Right.
<laughs> I'm using the same gold color that I used over here. It's that burnt umber yellow oxide mix to do this kind of bronzy colored one here. Yeah, I hope we'll have some fishing loving dads that get to enjoy this painting either as a gift or as a painting paint it themselves mm -hmm. and moms too well that's true moms, I, is, is I do enjoy paint fishing I, do. to to I don't do the worms Mark does the worms but I do like the rest of it it's been a long time since we fished we should go fishing this weekend because one of the one of the problems with fishing is you have to go outside. <laughs> you know. That's true. Neither one of us are big outdoorsy people, are we? Well, we are, except for in Arkansas when it's a million degrees. Yeah, very true. <clears throat> okay, I'm using the white mixed with this color, and I'm just going to do the edge of this to highlight it. Give it that shine. Look how that just makes it look like it's popping right off the canvas. Isn't that fun? Let's do this side too. Do right along this edge here. That'll raise that up and make it look like it's facing us a little bit. Just a little bit of white. I'm not going all the way on the edge. I'm going just inside the edge just a little bit. Give it a little dark contrast. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of my burnt umber. Mix that a little bit with that this color. And I'm going to do some burnt umber across here. And then a little bit right across here. Like that. And then Take that dark color and go right along that edge. And if you need to, you can switch to a liner brush to do these lines because it can be a little bit tricky to kind of turn this brush and keep it facing the, the edge. So if you want to, you can switch to a brush like this or you can kind of line that edge. All right. Trying to book it today. I'm trying to keep it under an hour, or at least close to an hour. I'm getting close. All right, let's go. Snap to it. I know. Okay, I'm gonna switch to a round brush now. Let me go ahead and grab the number one around. And I'm gonna get that fluid white. Just make it go on a little easier. If you don't have the fluid white, you can just use your regular white. And uh, thin it out with a little bit of water. I'm going to add a little bit of that yellow blue. A little bit goes a long way. Now when I say a little bit, I mean like a tiny dab. I'm going to put a highlight there, and I'm going to put a highlight on the fish, like a gill right here. Another one right here. Just a line straight down like this. And then I lift it up just before it gets to the end. And then on the tail, I'm going to do some lines down the tail, like that. I might zoom in just a little bit, honey. I feel like it could be a little bit closer. There we go. And then let's put in, I'm going to put another line right in here. A little bit thicker. I want to... Highlight that side of the fish a little bit. And then I'm going to grab some of this gray that was our... What was that color used for? What did I use that gray for? Maybe... Oh, is the splattering. It's that ultramarine blue and black. I'm going to add a little bit of that light blue to it. I'm going to use it to kind of outline this side of the fish a little bit.
And then I'm going to use the, get a little bit more black, a little bit darker color. I'm going to put in our segments on the body. So I'm just going to go across it and cut this fish up into little pieces here. Sorry, fishy. It's just going to do some horizontal lines here. They're kind of a little bit curved. Like that. And then what I can do is grab the color of my board. So grab a little bit of the unbleached titanium and black here. Try to get a color that's similar to our board background color. And come in just a little bit and just cut off just a little bit of that fish on either side. Yeah, because that one wiggles when it goes through the water. Right. It's so segmented. it's just going to make it look segmented. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we can even put a little highlight in the inside of those segments, just where the light might be catching it. Chopped them up. Let's grab a little bit of the white. See what color that eye is, but I can't tell. I might add just a little bit of blue, maybe just slightly. I'm gonna make the eye right here. Actually, that's the wrong place for it. It's farther over here. There we go. Big white eye. Let's do another one on this guy right here. <clears throat> if you've got a fluid paint, you can also use the back end of a brush to do that. And you just dip it into the fluid paint and just make a dot and make a perfect little dot. We'll do the, that for the eye. I'm going to grab a little dot of black and dab it off on my thing. So I've just got a little bit of that fluid black and I'm just going to go right in the center of that eye and touch it down. So it makes a perfect little circle. Let's do it here too. There we go. This guy's going to have some, grab some more of that bright yellow and just do a little bit more of that bright yellow on this side. Grab some of that dark green. I'm going to add a little bit of the ultramarine blue to it, make it even darker. We'll use it along this side. Just run a shadow along the back side of him, right there, I'm wiping it clean. Get a little bit of yellow, a little bit of that yellow green. Make a bright yellow green color. And we're going to do some dots. And I might need it a little bit brighter, so I'm going to touch just a little bit of white in there. Yellow green, cadmium yellow, medium, and just a tiny bit of white. There we go. All right, and then we're going to do some spots on this guy. So we'll throw out some information out there if you're new to Angela's channel. Down below the video you can find links or in the description links to Amazon to purchase painting supplies, also the brush guys. You can get a 5% off with the code Angela Fine Art. Uh, also listing all the colors that she's using. Maybe some colors she's not using. She's been known to do that too. I uh, yeah, I have. <laughs> and if you're saying, well, you know, I can't really draw, well, you're in luck. We have Patreon. Yes. So for a dollar a month through Patreon, the link's down below, you can get access to traceables going all the way back to February 2017. You can download them and all that Unlimited. stuff. Unlimited. 
unlimited. For a dollar. For a dollar. We just ask that you don't share them. Yes. We, I had to go medias. through and delete about 20 of them off of Pinterest this week. Mm-hmm. It's a tedious process. So. Yeah. <laughs> so it's there. It's just to help support the channel. And then there's other levels. $5 to get you access to a bonus video a month. $10 to the bonus video and a special Facebook group. That's black, by the way. Little dabs of black in the middle of those spots. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Go. No, so you can get down in there and and uh, check it all out. Yeah. Also, Facebook, she got another Facebook group that's open to people to share their art so they can show us what they're doing and everybody else. And it's a great group. There's like 11,000 members in there right now. Yeah, it's a really fun group. Yeah. It's you know, really encouraging. So a safe place to share and, and, mm-hmm. and encourage each other and all that good stuff. Okay, I did another coat of red on there. I'm going to grab a little bit of white here. Make that lighter red color. And we'll try that highlight again. It should work this time. I'm going to do a line down there. A little bit of a line there. Another line down the middle. And I'm ending it where the cone starts, so this line is going to end kind of where that cone starts there. There we go. A little bit brighter white. There we go. Okay. And then there's a little bit of this red on this as a shadow on or a reflection right here so I'm going to put a little bit of the red kind of on this thing right there just dab a little bit on there's a little bit down here too I'm seeing this is kind of wavy so it's catching the catching that red at different places And then I'm going to do a little bit of white on here. There's little highlights right there on that. This super chat is brought to you by Diana. And her message is, I got a fever. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Diana. That's so awesome. <laughs> oh, that is great. Thank you so much, Diana, for your support. We love it. <laughs> That's great. And just for that, <laughs> oh, a little extra more. more. <laughs> Wait a minute. I need to do it right here. Hold on. I can do it. I just hit have to hit it. <laughs> Okay, that's enough. Yeah. Enough silliness, people. <laughs> All right, making a dark red with the black, adding a little bit of black to my cadmium red medium. And I'm going to go on this side of that guy and give it a little bit of a... Maybe a little bit too dark. Go a little bit lighter with that red. And go back over the top of it and just tone it down a little bit. There we go. That's better. And then I'm going to use that color underneath or on this side on that this little guy back here to shadow it. And let's use the gold now. I'm just going to thin it out with a little bit of water. But you really don't have to thin it much because it's it's already transparent, so it's going to show through our colors underneath a little bit. I'm just going to put it right on top there. And if it covers too much, you can just dab it off a little bit. It'll catch down in the cracks there. Leave that shiny. You can't 
is kind of subtle, but let's do it over here. on me no oh am i <laughs> was i um, a little, a little. Bit. Oh, okay sorry just i didn't know we were so there. zoomed in and i'm just gonna dab off that dark area a little bit so that it shows up a little bit better if I can mix a darker it'll tone down the metallic nature of it a little bit to mix it with a color but do a little bit right there it look a little bit rounded right there. I need to get this a little bit darker. There we go. So we got Namibia watching us today. Ooh. All the way from Africa. Wow. I think that might be a first for a live I show. Yeah, I think so. It's amazing. That is pretty cool. Yeah, we get a few South South Africans, but we don't get a lot of other African nations, so that's very cool. All right, made a dark gray here. And I'm going to put it along this edge. Just inside, so I don't want to go right up to the edge. I'm going to get that white again, just to make sure that I have it light right along that outside edge so that there's a difference between the background color and this. You don't want it to disappear into the canvas. I might even do a darker. Actually, I'm going to get a black and we'll just do a dark, dark line right there. Come on. My paint's starting to get sticky. There we go. Just do a little dark outline right there. So actually you just said that your paint's getting sticky. <coughs> and somebody had asked about how do you keep your paint so workable? I so. Um, I spray them with water pretty regularly. So I just said to spray it again. Um, and also it helps if you pull just from one side. Leave one side um, untouched and pull your fresh paint from the one side here. It keeps this side fresh and that uh, the back side will kind of form a little bit of a skin almost and protect the paint underneath oh, and see. it gives you a little bit longer time to So you just kind of like dig with. it out? Uh-huh. You kind of dig it out from okay. that little spot. Okay. Did a darker teal right here. Just doing a stripe down. Kind of following the curve of this. So all the way down like that. And then we're going to do a darker. I'm boogieing today, so hopefully I'm not going too fast for you guys, but I'm just trying to get it done with shorter. I know kids are going to have a short amount of attention span, so. Oh, no, no. Pe people complain all the time that you take too much time painting, that you uh -huh. go too slow. 
so they're really appreciative that you're rushing through this. Are you joking with me right now? And Portugal's watching us. Stripe with the darker gray. And then Portugal, nice. Mm -hmm. Mona's eating ice cream. Mona, Mm -hmm. nice. I want some. I can't have ice cream anymore. It sucks. Ice cream sandwich. The best sandwich in the world. Now I want some. I can get my lactose-free ice cream, but they only comes in one. One. Mm -hmm. Australia is watching from the future right now. (laughs) How does it look tomorrow? Yeah, how's the weather in the future, Jane? (laughs) Going a little darker here and here. A little shadow underneath our little gills there. Let's do our... A little bit of white. All right. Do some cross hatching on this guy. Okay. Cross, cross, cross this way. Cross, cross, cross this way. So we have people from in Israel watching right now. And I know France for sure and Canada. All over the place. Israel, that's amazing. I, I just... It's so amazing to me that YouTube is allows us to do this, you know? It's pretty great. Brings people from all over the uh-huh. world together. I'm mixing a little bit of the cadmium red there with the uh, light with the cadmium red medium. I'm going to do my little upside down heart piece here on this guy. this a little bit on this to highlight on this side. Got an answer. A little bit of that dark red. What? Got an interesting question. Mix That's it up with that. A general question. Uh-huh. Uh, I would like to know that when you're choosing a frame for your painting, mm-hmm. how do you do that? What do you consider or what are your... I usually get, do neutrals. I don't really like doing colored mats. Or um, if I do a colored mat, it's like a neutral kind of navy dark, you know, dark color. I find that personally, I like darker frames. Like a uh, black always looks good with just about anything. Black, dark, dark woods. Um, something like this, you could go with something rustic. You know. But uh, I tend to be kind of traditional with the frames. I don't usually go for shiny stuff. If I do, maybe silver. But we do have kind of a dark silver in one of our... It's more like a gray, dark, dark gray with a little shine. All right, grabbing the silver here now. Speaking of silver, and I'm going to add some water. We'll add some... Mm, make sure that's light enough. I'm going to add some shine to this guy just on this side here. Keeping it transparent enough that it's not going to cover my other colors. We just want to add a little bit of that iridescence to it. And we can do the same thing with this guy here because he's got some of the silver color. Just barely kind of, almost kind of just scrubbing, dry brushing it on here. It'll come off. Those metallic flakes will kind of catch in the canvas. You don't have to go too thick with it. Okay, somebody's shopping in your store right now. Oh, nice. And they said there's two different golds. Yes, this is bright. Bright? Iridescent bright. Iridescent bright. And the silver is iridescent silver. These are the two that I'm using today. The bright gold's got a little bit more of a yellow tone to it. Okay, let's do our eye for this guy. So I'm gonna grab my brush, grab some yellow. I'm gonna 
gonna put the eye right here, nice big. Definitely gonna need a couple coats on this because it's not covering very well. Yellow does not tend to cover very well, so you might want to grab some of that white like we did before. And just use a little bit of white with it. See that white will make it more opaque automatically. There we go. We'll do that and let it dry and we'll do a little bit more yellow on top. Let me grab some red. And there's just a tiny touch of red at the mouth of this guy. So I'm going to do a little touch of red right here. This one also has a little touch of red right here, the top tip. And then there's a red bead underneath right here. I'm not even putting the hooks. So if you want to get fancy, you can put the little eye pins and all that kind of thing. I'm just kind of attaching this to each other mysteriously. So. <laughs> it's not really going to have all the correct, correct little hooks and things. I might do here, I'll, I'll do a little silver. I'll make it gray. My white. Mostly white. There we go. Very light. We'll do a little... Well, see, it's not even showing up. There we go. Give it a little circle here. No, the lure does not have lipstick on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to, trying to catch male fish. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You never know. I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> Grabbing some black here. I just want it dark enough to show up against this background here. I'm going to do my start doing my hooks here. And this is where you want to get your thin liner brush out. If you're doing this with kids, this is where I would probably use a Sharpie. Or some sort of water soluble, or not, or not water soluble, but um, pen that uh, is uh, waterproof, not water soluble. Sorry, opposite of water soluble. <laughs> Opposites. And you're gonna make your hook kind of a W almost. Hook them in a little bit, and then the hook kind of curves onto the inside a little bit. Like that. Let's do another one right here. It's getting quiet. Concentrating on the hooks. I'm turning up the the gain so we can hear you. Okay, sorry. Am I being quiet? You again? No, no, you don't. Okay. You don't ever get quiet as you get more focused. <laughs> that never happens. No. Good. I'm no, glad to no. know that. Nobody else goes. Man, she's getting quiet. <laughs> <laughs> gonna do the big long hook with this one. We're gonna put the feathers over the top of it, but I want to go ahead and. Put it in first, then we don't have to paint around the feathers or anything. And if you want to do, you can do little rings at the top here, something that your string is going to attach to. There's a hook right here. And then another one that's hooking down through the feathers here. Just take your time with this, but like I said, it's not cheating. If you want to just use a pen, it might be a little bit easier if you're not comfortable with using a liner brush. The main thing with the liner brush that you want to do is make sure that you're 
paint is thin enough because if it's too thick, it will not come off your brush and you'll end up pressing harder than you want to and then you'll end up with a big fat, or, you know, big fat line that you don't want. So just um, make sure you're thinning out your paint well enough, enough to give you some. And that's why I was using the thin, already thinned black. That just gives you a head start on that. I'm going to use some white and put some highlights in our on our hooks. Just kind of, it doesn't have to be all over, just kind of catching the middle part so I'm not going right to the edge. Super chat. Sweet. This super chat is from Carol. No specific message, so... Thank you, Carol. I think this one just caught her eye. Nice. Caught her eye here. I see what you did there, huh? <laughs> I was telling somebody about the channel the other day, and uh, she was like, so... So you, they have to pay to watch? And I was like, nope, they're free. And she's like, um... How do you make money? <laughs> it's like, how is that a thing? How is that a thing? I was like, well, we have people that are sweet and donate to our channel and sponsors like Lava, who occasionally we do a sponsor if it fits our channel. And I'm happy to uh, do one. This is our third sponsored video with Lava, and they are they've been great to work with and. I can highly endorse the product. I never, I never do any kind of sponsorships that I'm not 100% sold on because it's just not worth it. To we've turned out a lot of sponsors, a lot of weird products, a lot of products that just don't Product, go with our channel. Products we is, don't use. We'll just keep it at that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I'm very, very happy to be able to endorse lava for our show today and several of the people that uh, from our last uh, video that we did with them got some of their soap and they were like oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> and I was like I know right <laughs> I'm going to light, light red here to put a little highlight on my bead and I put a little highlight along the side of that little raised heart there um. Somebody wanted to know, could they do the hook highlights with the silver? Yes, I think I'm going to do that, actually. I'm going to go over it. I just wanted to put that in first, and then... But yes, I'm going to go over the whole... All of the hooks with the silver. And yes, they could use, like, a Posca pen or something like that. Yeah, too. absolutely. That would look good. Yeah. 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 Posca. Um, there's all kinds of acrylic paint pens out there that uh, make this kind of thing really easy. And I... I would definitely say, you know, if, you, if you're if you more comfortable drawing, which most people are, then I would just grab a pen and do it. It'll be a lot faster and a lot more fun, especially for kids. Because they, they, this can be a little bit frustrating working with the brush. It's great practice, though. I mean, if you want to, if you want to get comfortable with doing lining, this is, this kind of project is great. And just take your time with it. And, and do you have Posca pens in your Amazon store? I do, I think. Yep. I think I have the Molotow pens in there. They're basically the same. I'll go check. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do our little feathers. It's just I saved the fun part for last. This is my favorite part. So we need to put in our strings, too. I know my strings are green in the picture, but I almost want them to be red. What do you think? Maybe black. I don't know. We'll do we'll do black, I guess. Alright, so thinning this out really well, because I really need it fine, or very thin for my feathers, and I'm going to set it down in the middle and pull out quickly. And just lift. And I'm not pulling my brush. I'm not I'm not moving my hand with it. I'm just doing like this. And I'm kind of changing the direction a little bit so some of them are going to kind of come up to the side some of them are going to be long let's 
do a big long one right here. Oh yeah, there's Bosco pens in there. Okay, good. There we go. Let's do a little bit of white. Do some highlighted ones. that fluid white. That'll help it go on easier. There we go. Just a few little highlights. You don't need to do the all of them. And this side's got white. Whoops. Ooh. Big old blob of white there. Gonna Run my brush to a point so I get a good point on it. You don't want too much paint on there, like I just did. And I'm, this time I'm going straight down with it. So go from the bead, from the bottom of that bead. Don't go any wider than that bead. So they all kind of taper off from that. And down. And I'm going to leave a little bit of that. Hook showing. some of that silver and there's some silver highlights in some of this down in here like there's some long ones that trail through that are silver down below grab a little bit of black so they'll show up a little bit then do the white on top again Do a little bit of light blue just to give it a little contrast. Blue is a good highlight color for white, so or like shadow color for white, so it'll give it a little, just a slight. Bit of depth in there. It's too much water. one here. Just a little bit of a hook right there poking out. Maybe do the same right here. Just a little bit of the hook peeking over the feathers on one side. Grab that silver. Put some of that on top. rope so I'm just going to kind of dab it on so that it's a looks kind of more like rope you know ropes kind of got that texture so that it's not perfectly straight dab 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 This has been fun to paint. I hope you guys try it. It's a really fun project. Oh, I think they are. And I think I like the fact that it can be, you know, adapted to whatever colors you wanted. So if you have certain colors that you want to do instead of these ones, you can. I need to put the eye in this guy. Don't let me forget. So the eyes are the new feet. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Notorious for leaving the eyes, the, the feet off the birds. <laughs> <laughs> Grabbing some of that yellow. And put the yellow, dark, brighter yellow in the middle there. Around the edges there. There we go. And I think I'm going to 
go ahead and use a little bit of the black and just outline that. You don't have to do this part, but it's just going to make it show up a little bit better. And then use the back end of my brush with the black, the fluid black. Do a dot right there. And then one last thing we're going to do is put a little bit of a shadow on here. And this will give it kind of some depth. So what I want to do first is I'm just going to wipe off my chalk mark so I can see where I've got all my paint using a damp sponge or damp cloth here. Very lightly just kind of brush it off. Make sure your paint underneath is dry first. So, someone uh, wants to know if you know why fish are so easy to weigh. Why? Because they have their own scales. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually pretty good. <laughs> someone might need to go check on Mona. <laughs> Thinned out white here. Do a highlight on this guy right here, all the way down. Just kind of right in the middle between the light and the dark parts. There, we can brighten up this again if we want to. Give everything a little bit of a highlight there. watered down paint in this black maybe add a little bit of white to it just a little it's got to be darker than the background color a little bit lighter than our black and we're going to go through here maybe a little bit more thin thinned out Just go along one side of all of these with a little bit of a shadow. I'm going to go a little bit darker on this guy because he's it's almost the same color as him. And let's do the, sh the hooks too. It doesn't have to be right up next to it. It can be a little bit away from it because they're not going to hang straight against the fence, right? Or the whatever this is that we're doing it on. The canvas. Canvas. Well, uh, okay. <laughs> <sighs> Smart Alec. Just imagine if fish ate flowers. You'd be having so much fun right now. <laughs> We'd be able to do flowers and fish. It'd be great. Flowers with hooks to catch the fish. Go on one side of that. Just a little bit of space between the line and that. 
think we are done. What do you think? Did I get all of it? Everybody's got hooks. Everybody's got eyes. Everybody has eyes who need it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use my favorite castell pen and sign it. And I'm going to say thank you guys for those who watched today and those who are watching the replay. Um, really appreciate you. Appreciate everybody who donates to the channel. It keeps us doing these fun free shows for everybody to enjoy. We're so glad to be able to provide it as a service to you guys, and uh, we appreciate your generosity in helping to support our channel. Um, and if you do this, you can share it with me on my social media links or down in the description. Uh, be sure to check out the Lava uh, Facebook page and all that other good stuff. All those links are down in the description. Uh, if you paint and get messy or fish and get messy or <laughs> do automotive, there's all kinds of different things. Uh, anytime you're getting... Uh, messy hands uh it definitely i'll be using it this afternoon so <laughs> in about it <laughs> five minutes from now <laughs> all right guys thanks so much and we'll see you tuesday night we'll have another bird for you uh for our bird series it'll be mark's birthday too so woohoo! <laughs> all right see you then bye <laughs>